Welcome back to World History. This is Mr. McCall. Today's lesson, what we're going to focus on are the different hominid groups and their special capabilities. Specifically, I want you to analyze how the capabilities of each hominid group helped them survive. Over here, we're going to list off the hominid groups. Then we're going to talk about each of their special capabilities. And then at the end of the lesson, I'll have a couple questions for you. Sounds good. Let's get started. First hominid group it would be a very good strategy to pause me right now and see if you can just list off all the hominid groups by their nicknames over here. I hope you did well. Here we go. First off, we have Lucy. Next up, we have Homo habilis the handyman. Then we have Homo erectus, or the upright man. Then we have our good friends, the Neanderthal man. And finally, let's add us, the double wise man. Because we are very, very smart. All right, so let's talk capabilities. Now, all of you that did your homework for the vocabulary know that a capability is a special skill, something that set them apart. To me, I always think of a superhero. Superman's superpower, well, he could do lots of different things. He could fly. He had superhuman strength. I think he could also see through walls. I think I saw him shoot lasers from his eyes one time. Uh, Spider-Man could climb walls and Batman, I don't know what Batman's superpower was. I, he wore black a lot. But let's look at Lucy. Now, Lucy's special capability that set her apart from the other animals, she could walk on two feet. Now, we always refer to Lucy as the nickname of the species, but obviously there were also male or men, uh, Australopithecus, uh, Afarensis. Uh, so, because they walked on two feet, their hands were free to protect, let's put to protect or carry, because they could protect their young or carry their young or also protect their food and carry their food. That, let's look at Handyman. Now, Handyman had a bigger brain. And they lived in groups. Both of these helped them survive. Bigger brains enabled them to make more tools. Living in groups, well, if you live in groups, you can defend yourself easier. Upright man, let's take a look at upright man. They had larger brains as well. Uh, their larger brains helped them create more complex tools and use fire, which is a big step forward. I'm big fan of the use of fire. Uh, now let's look at Neanderthal Man. Neanderthal Man was special in that they were able to hunt in organized groups. So they weren't just attacking animals individually, but they ran in a pack and they uh, would attack in a pack team mentality, which makes sense because they also were the first to develop a sense of community, meaning that they cared for one another. And finally, double wise man. This is us. We've got bigger brains, better tools, and art and music. So some steady progress moving down this list. All right. Now, one more thing I'd like to do before we talk about our questions. Let's take a look at this. Let's, let's play a game. Name that hominid. Now, we've got all five of our hominids here. I'm going to give you a second to pause and see if you can go through and name. Well, I hope you did well. 
Here we go. I'm going to give you the answers now. First one, that is Australo... Now, let's just call her Lucy. All right, we know it's Lucy because Lucy walked on two feet. Hands were free to protect. It could be a, a baby there. It's actually fruit, so they're, they're actually carrying food in this picture. Only about three feet tall. Pretty short. Next up, we have Handyman. And since this is a nickname, let's put quotations. Handyman. Now, Handyman was the first to actually make tools. They also walked up, right? They were a little bit taller, about four feet tall, and they made simple tools. That looks like just kind of a sharpened rock, but could have been used for lots of things. Next up, we have Homo erectus, but we prefer to call them upright. Upright man. I think for rather obvious reasons. All right, upright man, famous for being the first to use fire. They also grew substantially. They're almost five and a half feet tall. And they could walk upright. They had stronger leg muscles, so they could actually migrate, which is a very important vocabulary term. Next up we have Neanderthal man. A lot of, they're very similar to Homo sapiens sapiens, but there's some major difference. I think if I saw this guy on the street, I'd be creeped out. Uh, but if we take a look, they've got more complex tools. We've got uh, a spear, and spears enable them to uh, be more successful on the hunt. And finally, we have, that's right, that's us, the double wise man. Double wise man uh, has the more complex weaponry, better tools, bigger brain. Now, if you look at Neanderthal Man's skull, it's actually bigger, but uh, they just had more protection. So their brains weren't actually bigger. Their heads were bigger, but their brains were not. All right, we are all finished here. Let's take a look at some questions before we wrap up. I'm just going to do one, because really, you should be able to answer this for each of the different hominids. But let's say, what was Neanderthal man's special skill? All right, so what was the special skill that enabled Neanderthal man to survive and to be successful in life? You should be able to answer that, not just for Neanderthal man, but for each of these. All right, good luck. Take care.